Hey everyone, this is Julius with Computing for Designers. Um, Computing for Designers is a community I'm starting to help designers build better technical intuition around software. And this is a video series that spun out of the initial beta workshop I did for that community, um, where I wanted to cover and talk about more concepts outside of the workshops to kind of reinforce ideas and also explore some, you know, maybe more specific details that we didn't have time. And uh, I'm sharing it with the broader design community uh, publicly so in hopes that this can help you and maybe spark some some interesting questions or discussions or ideas and better understanding. So um, this is a part of um, maybe a couple video series I want to do about Apple Maps um, and this is suggested by one of our workshop beta members Haley. Um, Apple Maps is just kind of rich with uh, a bunch of different interesting interactions like if you take this iOS map here right you can kind of pan it around which is pretty simple with a single finger and then you touch two fingers down and all of a sudden you can rotate it and zoom and pan at the same time, right? It feels like super fluid. And then also you'll notice, you know, if I take two fingers and push upwards, or actually if I zoom into a certain level and I start seeing buildings, if I touch it and move upwards, right? The buildings all of a sudden become 3D. And if I zoom all the way out, it transitions from a 2D map, right? To a 3D globe, right? And that's pretty cool, right? So first video, we're really just going to talk about pinch to zoom. Um, it is a pretty fundamental building block of uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, mobile applications. And um, it's uh, pretty interesting, you know, how you convert kind of finger touches onto the screen and then translate that into some sort of like meaning in the interface. So let's just start there, right? So let's say you have two fingers. You have one finger uh, down here and then we have another finger up here. And um, we want to start capturing this information and turning it into, let's say, a zoom to start, right? So the first thing here with pinch to zoom is we would draw a, a line between these two and find the midpoint, right? So we would take the uh, X position here and the Y position here, right? Compare it to the X position and Y position here, and then basically find a halfway point. You know, if you draw a, rec a rectangle here, right? It's it's literally the center of this. Right? And this becomes the center or the pivot point of the interaction. So that means that uh, whatever zoom we do is going to be based around here. So the, the, the image or the map will have this pivot point be fixed and zoom around it. And you can see this very pronouncedly in the uh, Mac app. Right? So let's say um, I put my finger here uh, right in front of the cheesecake house. And if I pinch the zoom, right, it's all oriented around there. And uh, the Mac Maps app actually has this interesting difference from the mobile app that we just saw, where I can no longer pan this map. As soon as I started the pinch to zoom and rotate gesture, it locks me out from panning the map. And so this is helpful because I can show you, you know, this kind of property of like locking a pivot point of the map, but um, it does feel like less fluid and I have to like raise my hands and then touch down again and then start with a scroll gesture to get panning. But when I'm panning, I can't zoom. And rotate right so it's really interesting and on the mac app there's kind of this this uh, exclusive kind of code that handles uh, these two gestures but uh, on the mobile app it's very fluid it's one gesture it handles handles all of it um but yeah so this is how we determine the, the pivot point and let's say we pinch outwards right to zoom a little bit right let's this uh this map grows bigger um how do we actually determine how much bigger right we have the scale of this map like let's say it starts off at the scale of like you know 100, right? Uh, in maps, there's usually a zoom level. It goes from like, you know, one to like 14 or 20, depending on the mapping system that you're using. Um, and it's, it's kind of like exponential uh, growing. Uh, but in this case, let's just think about percentages because it's easier. So let's look at these two lines, right? That's really the only thing that's changing, right? The center point is not changing. As I said before, the pivot points are not changing. And yes, the fingers are changing, but we can uh, turn the position of these two Right, into one number that we can compare, which is the distance between these two. Right, and so if we look at the before and we look at the after, right, or something like 155 or something like 212. And then you just find the ratio between these to figure out how much you want to scale it. So if it's growing larger, right, uh, you would find that out by looking at after divided by before, and you would see that as a number above one. Right, if it's smaller, like let's say we're going from at, from 212 to 155, you would flip this equation and then you end up with. Um, 155 to 1 to 1 right? You end up with a 73%, right? So we'd end up with a 73% um, zoom. So that's pretty simple, right? Um, I think the 
general idea here is pretty simple that we have this two lines that we're calculating based on the, the two, two finger points and we're just simply uh, taking uh, the difference, right? actually not the difference, the ratio, and then applying that to the map or whatever element that we're pinching the zoom. Um, and something to note here is that when you, when you start to gesture right, as soon as you touch your fingers down and it records the center pivot, it's also probably going to uh, start recording the, the, the before distance, right? And then that means that um, every frame after that, right, every time you're moving the, these fingers, it's going to look at that distance between the fingers now versus when you started the gesture. And then you can derive kind of the difference. Um, and then that means that you can kind of transform this, this object pretty freely. And then when you end the gesture, you can then save the newly updated rotation and, and zoom and position um, after. And this is helpful for some systems where you, know, you don't necessarily want to like save or commit a change until the gesture is finished. Um, uh, but it might be different from something in like multiplayer land, right? So if you have multiple people looking at the same map and you want to share the rotation data and the zoom data between them, you don't want to like wait until a gesture ends, right? You want to be able to show it live happening. Uh, so the, the way it handles the, the before and afters and when it sends data over and when it saves it might be, might be a little different. So let's look at the other part here, right? Rotate. And um, the concept is pretty similar. So let's say you're taking these two points and are rotating it like this. We look at the angle of rotation of the line, which you can figure out with um, some trigonometry. Um, it's either cosine or sine, I forget. But basically, you take uh, kind of the, the two points here, right? And then you would uh, find the, the difference of the y and then difference of the x, and then you plug that into, again, sine or cosine. I forget which. Um, that turns you out with this you know, lovely negative 15 degrees, uh, or maybe it's positive 300, whatever. Uh, and then you do the same thing for the other line, and then you have this before to after, and you simply just subtract it, right? You take the difference, and so in this case, we're going from negative 52 to negative 15, and you end up with positive 36, right? Which is how much we end up rotating with this. So if you combine these two, right, uh, and then every time, you know, your finger moves, every frame of the system, it's looking at kind of the distance, and then it's looking at the rotation, and it can do this all at the same time. And uh, in the case of, uh, again, uh, mobile iOS maps, uh, when you're moving right, your fingers, the pivot point can change too. And so the, 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 the distance the pivot point is moving then is translated to the actual panning of the map. So you can like pinch and zoom and, and move around and the pivot point is always gonna stay in the middle, right? And so that, that distance is actually what's determining uh, how to offset the map in, in, in X and Y space. Um, and something to talk a little bit more about too is that there's this, this idea of a pivot is actually um, is, is powerful but also makes things a little bit more complicated when you think about how to implement this interaction in, in code. Um, so this is just one small example of um, how pivot points can be tricky to handle and we won't talk about how to like actually address this because that gets pretty gnarly but uh, I'll just show you like um, let's say we have this uh, map or image and then we decide to pivot touch down in the top left over here, and then the pivot point is set you know, over here. And if we rotate it by, let's say, 15 degrees, right, you end up with something like this. Let's say you end that gesture, and then you touch down over here, and now the pivot point is down here. Uh, in most graphic systems, in most interface systems, as soon as you change the pivot of you know, whatever element you're changing, the rotation uh, is still 15, but the entire image is just gonna shift. The entire element will shift down. And that's because um, in, mo in most graphical systems, the, the pivot um, is what the rotation affects. So um, if you're over here and you compare that to over here, even though the rotation has changed, the pivot has, so the output is actually different. So that means that when you actually change the pivot points, you actually need to do some additional work here to offset the element, right? So the image.x and image.y actually need to be, you know, shifted by some difference, right? And, you know, to start, you might be like, oh, it's just a difference between the pivot points. And yeah, you'd be on the right track and then you can go down a whole rabbit hole. Um, but yeah, this is, this is uh, kind of one example of how pinch zoom can be a little bit complex to implement. But the, but the basic idea here, I hope, is, is pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, so hopefully this is helpful.
Um, again, there's multiple parts to come to this, and so in the future I'll hopefully touch on those, the, the, the buildings and the zooming from 2D to 3D, and also like the labels. The way labels work is actually pretty interesting. Um, but yeah, hopefully if this is helpful, please share it with your friends. Um, follow along. We have a, a newsletter you can sign up for or, or follow along on this YouTube channel. And uh, yeah, I hope to see you around. And if you have any questions or suggestions for future uh, breakdown videos, uh, I'd love to hear them. Feel free to, to tweet at me or comment or, or whatever. You can find me on the internet. Thanks.